So as you think about 2015, what strikes you as being the hot, important topics that were talked about most this year? I think it's still PGS. PGS is very uh, important for a uh, center and probably for patient because uh, it's, it's helped you in, uh, in just uh, avoid to, to perform transfer and for the patient to, to expect result uh, uh, when they cannot expect result. So just because the, all the psychological problem, all the uh, emotional uh, that the patient, the couple has during the IVF are very important. And uh, it's probably the, the most important problem for a dropout. I think that when you, you are able to transfer the, the best embryo that you can have, of course, we, don't, we know that we don't have all the embryos that can implant, but at least you, you make a, a good selection. That's really still the most important thing. After that, of course, is uh, s finished the, the time where uh, most of my colleagues uh, uh, demand for uh, uh, low uh, stimulation, uh, uh, natural, natural cycle, all the stuff. But we know now that to, to, to get the best result, you need to uh, have uh, at least 15 eggs. And, uh, and also, uh, it's more over and over, and more and more uh, accepted the, the idea that you, you have to calculate the cumulative pregnancy rate. And so to, to let the patient uh, know that uh, having uh, a good number of eggs uh, is not uh, a, a bad condition health, but is, uh, is uh, important for, for them for their result. So it sounds like what struck you this year was personalization, personalized medicine, understanding the patient, and personalized embryo, so understanding the embryo as well. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, I think that the, the higher number of uh, uh, study and, uh, and project uh, uh, around the world is uh, trying to understand uh, which is it is the, the trick to, to get the, the right embryo and to transfer only the right embryo. Of course, uh, it's not something that we can do now, but uh, we hope that the, the study will be able to, to show us which is the best embryo. As you look back on this year and recent changes and recent presentations, what really strikes you as hot from this year? You know, it's been really an exciting time to be a reproductive endocrinologist. We've developed um, evidence over the last year of things that are going to make a big impact, I think, on our patient success. One of the things that we're seeing that in the past um, we suspected but we didn't have evidence for is now evidence that um, pre-implantation genetic screening of embryos not only really helps you select the embryo with the greatest potential to implant, but it both is cost effective, reducing by more than 50% the average cost of having a baby by IVF, which I think is wonderful, amazing um, for the patients. At the same time, um, the, there's a lot less stress for the patient. The duration of their treatments are much shorter. So I think as well, that's very exciting. And then at the same time, um, there's really been much more of an acceptance of something that we actually were one of the first centers to start, and that's in vitro maturation of human oocytes, where a lot more centers have sort of started to jump on board and do this, because it's another option um, to offer patients who can't necessarily afford traditional treatments, because you avoid a lot of the cost of the medication. And it's been demonstrated that the success rates with in vitro maturation have gotten a lot better as well over time. So I think over the last year, those are some things that have really come to the fore forefront. So that's really interesting. I mean, you're capturing some things at the laboratory level and some things at the patient level. So it really is an exciting time. Yeah, I think it's a great time.
I wonder, as you look back this year, 2015, what struck you as really important, really great from the clinical perspective, the embryology perspective? Oh yeah, this year, oh yeah, was really nice for embryology. I think, uh, for example, um, PGS uh, is getting very, very important than before. And uh, now we try to make a tropectoderm biopsy. We changed uh, days or uh, a lot of things and next generation sequencing and qPCR and a lot of thing, uh, things are changing. Uh, that's why PJS was very important. Uh, second thing, time lapse actually uh, this year a little bit. Uh, uh, one day, uh, oh yeah, now it's okay. Uh, every uh, um, IVF lab are using time lapse and a lot of things changing in embryology lab. We are learn re learning a lot of things about uh, embryos uh, with time lapse imaging system and other things. Yeah, 2015, <laughs> like this, PGS. Time lapse was important. You are very important. And, and when you look at PGS and time lapse together, you have two different types of assessment tools of the embryo. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, right? yeah. But, yeah. But if you yeah, look totally at them together, you really, yeah, you really yeah, get a good picture yeah. of that embryo. Yeah, we know picture is nothing because uh, we're very nice looking embryos, but not normal. In the future, I think we will make PJs for every embryos. Now it's very expensive, I think, and we will learn a lot of things about embryo uh, morphokinetics. We we can choose embryos with morphokinetic and PJs. Maybe we can combine together. I don't know. PJs a little bit invasive for me. I don't like to take uh, some part of the embryos, but it's necessary. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll see. So, Ala, so let's talk a little bit about some of the innovation and some of the advances and some of the great things that happened this year for you. Um, my area of expertise is um, reproductive medicine and uh, fertility preservation. Now, I would like to focus uh, on uh, the practical significance of it. Uh, first of all, this gear has been um, very fruitful for us. The key event uh, for us and uh, all reproductive medicine, Russian reproductive medicine in uh, general, was um, the first baby uh, born uh, in our clinic after uh, trans transplantation of cryopreserved ovarian tissue. Uh, that patient was uh, diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, I personally, I personally um, can't help admiring um, those um, uh, fantastic advancements in cutting-edge reproductive te technology that have been made uh, over the last five years. One should mention uh, vitrification of uh, all sites, cryopreservation of ovarian tissue, um, so uh, new cultural medium, innovative um, equipment, uh, time-lapse technology, and uh, intellig intelligent software uh, enabling uh, automatic selection. Uh, the best one embryo for transfer and of course uh, implementation PGD and P PGS programs. Uh, moreover, I would like to focus the true revolution in the um, area of stimulation. Uh, double stimulation has become possible due to innovative vitrification technology. Uh, however, um, uh, the um, most attention is currently drawn to uh, mitochondrial DNA uh, problem. Uh, the modern therapeutic application are capable of preventing uh, tra transmission uh, of mitochondrial DNA disease. It's very important for future um, development of IVF. Uh, 